I started poorly. There are gonna be people who watch the first three holes and just go, Whoa, this guy's a pro! No! In the hole. Please. This shot was so bad that it was good. I didn't deserve to make that, but I really wanted to. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. Today we have a nine hole course vlog, but that's not it. We're also gonna do a little tour update. I'm gonna fill you guys in on how a couple of tournaments went last month that I played in. Uh, two tournaments, two days on, one day off, two days on, and then the second tournament that I played, I had my best finish ever. So I'm really excited to talk to you guys about that. And before you ask, no, I don't have any footage of the tournament. If this video gets to 5,000 likes, the next tournament I play, I will bring a cameraman with me and have him film every single shot. And if you wanna see that, comment below, let me know. Like the video, again, if it gets to 5,000 likes, next tournament I play, there will be a cameraman there. I wanna do that, like that's where I want this channel to go, but the support has gotta be there. So if this video does well, and I feel like it's worth it to actually have a cameraman come out and really produce like a actual tournament vlog, Comment below. Let's make that happen and uh, enjoy the video. We're gonna talk about my best finish ever. It's gonna be a lot of fun playing nine holes of golf at a beautiful golf course here in Kansas City. It's colder than hell, but we're gonna have a lot of fun. Let's get into it. It is the off season. Everything's a little dormant here in Kansas City, but this is a really great golf course. I love playing it. I'm very excited for today's video. We're just gonna play golf and I'm gonna update you on how tournaments have been going for the last month. I've been posting a little bit on my Instagram, so if you want like daily updates on how tournaments are going, follow me there. But if you haven't been following me on Instagram or if you want just like a little bit more in-depth information on how tournaments have been going, stay tuned. We're gonna get right into it. First hole out here at golf course. The tee boxes are rolling at like a 10 probably. I'm not sure what the greens are rolling at. I didn't really get a chance to hit any putts, but that's unbelievably fast. Hole number one, 430 yard par four. Got driver in hand. Just gonna hit it at that bunker straight through the fairway. Try to get it to cut back in. Right at that bunker, it looks like it's gonna wind up in it. Played a couple of events in Dallas, Texas. And you're gonna notice a trend in this video and it's that most of the tournaments, both of the tournaments I played in this video, it was a two day tournament, one day off, and then another two day tournament. And the reason for that is um, these are kind of just like little off season events, little tune ups. It made it really easy that everybody could just stay in Dallas and play these two events. So the first event was out at this course called Castle Hills in Dallas, Texas. Get there, go ball. A little heavy, no bien. I guess I'll start by um, talking about a lesson I got at the beginning of the year that kind of changed everything for me. Uh, I played a nine hole playing lesson with Scott Fawcett. He's like a course management dude. We, we played nine holes. He basically just, just told me that I needed to work on driving and lag putting and that was pretty much it. Like everything else was gonna work itself out. And so as a result, I pretty much doubled how much I was working on my driving clubs and my lag putting. And that made it a lot easier for me to score in that I wasn't making, I wasn't making as many mistakes. Like I wasn't, you know, making bogeys because I was hitting it into fairway bunkers or three putting from 40 feet and stuff like that. So those two things helped me considerably in being able to raise my floor, I guess is a good way to put it. My ceiling's always gonna be high because I've got skills, but having my floor lower really gives me a lot of confidence that I'm gonna have opportunities to make money a lot on tour. So the first event that I played out at Castle Hills, uh, it was kind of the first event back where I felt like I was nailing down routines and habits of excellence, like journaling, meditation, stuff like that that's really getting my brain into a, in a position where I feel like I was able to compete. So here's the pre-round check-in, just some GoPro footage of me in my car talking about kind of how I felt going into this event. See how long the drive is. I looked last night and it said 18 minutes, but it is rush hour, so who knows. 20 minutes. I've definitely had situations where, you know, you look at the... Don't like that. I want, you to sh I want you to shut up. Yeah, I've definitely had it happen a number of times where if I'm in a bigger city than Salina that I'm not used to, you'll check the ETA at like 10 p.m. and it says 18 minutes and then you get in the car and it's rush hour and it's like 45. That's just a beautiful thing when you get 20, 25 minutes of uh, your warm up time chopped because you don't understand how traffic works. And we have arrived. Wish me luck. I'll see you guys in a couple hours. 
never played this course because they didn't allow practice rounds, forgot to mention that. So I'll tell you about the course after I get back. Deuces. about 15 footer for par here. That wasn't the best opening hole. After round one, I felt like I left a lot of strokes out there, but I was in the money, which is generally in a professional event, a pretty good sign that you played well. So I felt really good going into round two, hitting a lot of good golf shots, felt like I was scoring well which is kind of the point of everything we and Scott were working on. Here's the car footage from pre-round two. Welcome back. Right now, I just put the car in drive, and now I'm putting on my seat belts. This is technically a moving violation. Driving now to the Lakes at Castle Hills golf course, currently T16, I believe. I didn't, I didn't look at how many people were in the field. I believe I'm in the money. I'm not exactly sure though. Scores are going to be lower today. People are going to be adjusting to the greens just like I will. But what's important is to go in with no expectations again, I think. I think I think that's that's always a good idea to just go in no expectations and try to hit every single shot as good as I can. I'm feeling good about my game. I'm feeling good about the mental side of my game, my ability to score, my ability to, most importantly, I think, shrug off bad shots and be ready for the next one. Just need to keep it going. Keep it you know, between the mayo and the mustard and then hope a couple putts fall. And I think we're gonna be in good shape. So once tournaments come around, it's play what you brought and hope it's good enough. Hope a couple putts fall, pray for a little bit of luck and can, might be able to make some money. Uh, about a 210 yard par three here. It's 198 to the flag. It's cold and a little downwind, so I'm hitting seven iron. Go ball. Woo. I think that might be close. It's so much lower than I thought it was going to be. I mean, par on a 210 yard par three on a 45 degree day. I don't feel too bad about that. What a freaking day. Uh, started off driving it into the green side bunker on one, didn't get up and down. It was a 40 yard bunker shot, so whatever. Two, I missed about a seven footer for Burry. Hit a wedge to seven feet, really good wedge, and it broke a lot more than I thought it would. Three, hit it into a green side bunker, didn't get out, made double. I was on a down slope and it was firm and the green was running away from me, so I had to try to get cute with it and got too cute. Four, had 206 in the middle of the fairway on a par five, made bogey, hit it into another bunker, uh, about a 50 yard bunker shot that time and didn't get it close enough to the hole and three putted. So I started off my day, if I had gotten up and down from every bunker and made that seven footer, I would have been three under through four and instead I'm three over through four. So that was just like such a frustrating start. And then, and then, the weather got bad. So I, I just absolutely biff it on these first four holes, these first four easy holes, and then the weather kicks up and gets bad. So next thing I know, I'm four over through six, and I am leave my tee shot short on seven, and I'm just thinking like, this might be a long freaking day. But credit to the process, credit to the system, I, I gutted it out. I mean, I, I, I could have shot a whole lot worse number than I did. I made par on seven, hit two really good shots on eight, made birdie, hit a couple really good shots on nine, probably could have made birdie, but just barely missed my birdie putt. Made a really awesome birdie on 10, back footed a four iron from 215 to like eight feet and made the putt. And then made a really like, just a weird triple on 11. I hit one OB on a line that I didn't think it was impossible. I thought it was impossible to get there. It was like 345 in the cold it's like 50 degrees out today i didn't think it was possible to get there and somehow i got out of bounds and just made an ugly ugly triple with a double a triple and four bogeys there were flashes of excellence in there and i'm not i'm not really ready to just not acknowledge that i feel really good about today 
despite the double and the triple and the multiple three putts and just all the bad stuff, there was a lot of good in there. I'm gonna go home, do my stats, do a little reflection, talk on the phone with my coach. Looking forward to continuing to hone in this process and just try to get better every day. It's really as simple as it gets. And that's all I have to say right now. Goodbye. Greatest drives I've ever hit in my life. So obviously there's some negative emotions in there, but the positives that we had to take away from that were that, like, I think Nor I think like old Ben, let's just, we'll just call him old Ben, like Ben from a year ago, would have been in the money after round one, shot 75 in round two, and been like, oh my god, I'm such a freaking like choke artist, you know? I can't believe I choked that away. But the nice thing I think about you know the changes I've made to my like my mental routine is I was very much focused on the positives of what happened in that round. And I know I shot 75, but I followed it up with an eagle on a 600 yard par, par five where I went driver four iron and then made the putt. Like I, I had some good stuff in there. So going into this next event, like I was so confident because I was really only focused on the great shots that I was able to hit during the second round at Castle Hills. Like a lot of bad stuff happened, but also a lot of good stuff happened. We have found ourselves in another fairway bunker. 168 yards here, pretty much dead into the wind. I give a seven, a six, and an eight iron. I think I'm gonna go with the seven here. Trying to put something on the green. This is not where you want to be with this, with this green. That went so far. <laughs> so after Castle Hills, we had a day off and then round one of Firewheel Lake started. So two rounds, day off, two rounds, if, you, if that makes sense. On the day off, typically we were supposed to play a practice round, but the conditions were like really bad. So you, we went out and played a practice round, but it was more of just like trying to see the golf course, not really practicing much. In round one of Firewheel, I had like a really pretty bad start. I three putted the first hole for 20 feet. Second hole, I missed a six footer for birdie. Third hole, I had a, like a bad double cross on an eight iron and made like a really solid bogey save, or yeah, bogey save. So I'm two over through three and gutted it out. Like continued to really like grind as far as like hitting the right shot every time, making sure I didn't get impatient and ended up shooting two under in round one. And the conditions were pretty easy, so the leader was seven under after round one. I shot two under, I'm five, I'm five strokes back. But I know if I go out in round two and I play like good golf, it'll be my best finish ever in a professional event. But the conditions were supposed to be like significantly harder in round two. It was like, it's gonna be like 40 degrees and blowing 20. Wind chill, I think was supposed to get down to like the low 20 degrees. So I knew it was gonna be like a survival test. Really my goal was just to hit as many good shots as I could. I'm trying to fly this about 18 yards. It's like a 25 yard pitch. Oh, it's so low. Dylan, that is such a bad golf shot. You don't want a 30 footer for par, especially when you're one over through two. This is not my best golf, I gotta be honest. I didn't deserve to make that, but I really wanted to. That would have felt nice. Where's the wind coming from? Um, so, this shot was so bad that it was good. We found the channel of destiny. That was a seed. We had 300 yards in there. I think I almost got to the green. Let's go. Birdie time, baby. Uh, remember when I said I almost got to the green? 
I'm like 70 yards away from the flag. I thought this bunker was greenside and it's just super not. This is, uh, this is a tough putt, not gonna lie. 16 footer, you know, when I was in high school, we played a high school tournament at this golf course and I eagled this hole. I think high school Ben's about to beat professional Ben by one, maybe two shots. Wow, that snapped at the end. That was going sideways. Ooh. It is morning time in Frisco, and today is round two of the NTPGA at Firewheel of Lakes. Yesterday I shot two under. Honestly, felt like I played really good. Mental game was strong. Swing was good. Putting like pretty well, reasonably well. Got off to a really shaky start with the putter. Had a three putt from 20 feet on the first hole. Missed a six footer on the second hole for birdie. But after that, it, it got a whole lot better. Felt like I hit it really good. Honestly, like shot two under and that was, I, it could have been a whole lot lower. And I, I feel good about that. I'm in like, I think I'm T5 right now, tied for fifth. If I go out today and I play a good round, it'll be my best finish in a pro event. I'm just gonna try my best to go out with no expectations. Just feel like I'm every single hole trying to hit my best shot possible. Every single shot trying to hit my best shot possible. And in the conditions today, it's gonna to be tough, but I, I feel like I'm ready. I feel like I'm prepared. Right now, my swing is really solid. Mental game feels really good. One shot at a time is like exactly what's going on. That's a good feeling to have. I, I really like where everything is right now. Just kind of trying to keep everything as simple as possible. Meditation and mental imagery really have like changed my mental game completely. I'm super grateful for that. If I can, you know, string a couple good rounds together and get my best finish ever, I'd say it's a pretty darn good start to the year and a good omen for my yearly goal to win a golf tournament. Um, I'm gonna go through my warm-up routine right now, drive to the golf course, play the tournament, and then I'll see you guys after. Goodbye. I wanted to cut so bad. That's gonna be a good drive, I think. I just don't understand the wind right now. <laughs> this is making no sense to me at all. You know the irony is not lost on me that I'm talking about my best finish ever and I'm uh, hitting it the way that I'm currently hitting it. Comment below if you think that's funny or just sad. It's probably, probably more sad than it is funny. This is a very long birdie putt to have after a 125 yard wet shot. Fifty one footer to three and a half feet. I really don't feel too bad about that. Just try to wiggle this thing in there for par. Oh, what is that? Through five? Two over par. This is now operation get back to even underway. Next hole is a par five, so we got chances. It's about 570 yard par five, but it's downwind, which means I think we can get there too. It's really just trying to end it on the left edge of this bunker. I'm gonna start it at that big fat tree, the big fat, fat tree through the fairway. Cut it. See what happened there um, is uh, I, I'm just not good. I've certainly been in a better spot. I cleaned the ball off. It was covered in mud. <laughs> Surprisingly, the lie is really good after I improved. Uh, it's 299 to the green, which means that straight downwind, I hit that drive about 270. The toe of the driver was very active on that one. I'm going four iron. I'm just going to try to punch it. Did I just hit it directly into that bunker? Yeah. Yeah, I did. I did do that. I don't know if this course flaw could be going a whole lot worse. It's it's never a good position when it's a downwind par five and you're like just praying to make par. We're in a simulation, Jalen. Something weird's going on here. Ew. Ball's covered in mud. Gross. This 
is not what I had in mind for a birdie attempt, but I'm gonna try not to be too much of a complainer in this video, but it is like 42 degrees out. See here, that ball was dead center in the cup. Do not rewind the video and watch it again to disprove me. Today didn't suck. I'm being pessimistic. Today was awesome. Today was really good. Tough conditions today. It was 40 degrees, blowing 20 gusts of 30, and shot four under. I'm six under total. Right now I'm tied for second, which I'm pretty happy about. It's definitely my best finish in a professional event. It's not a very big field. There's only 40 people playing. Second place, I'll take that for sure. Be my biggest check in a while, my best finish in a while, best I feel like I've played in a while. And it feels good, man. The process is paying off. Been working really hard on getting the process together that I feel like puts me in the best position to succeed day in and day out. So to actually have some results, feels really good. The good, good effect is real. That, you know, my second tournament playing good, good stuff. First tournament I played really good, just had a lot of like stupid mistakes and dumb breaks. This tournament played really good, had some stupid mistakes that <laughs> in reality probably cost me an opportunity to win, but I'm not gonna complain. I feel really good about the way that went. This one feels good. <sighs> I feel like I can breathe. <laughs> All right, wind is that way, hole goes that way. So I'm gonna start down the left side of the fairway and it's gonna freaking cut this time. Uh, I got a 65 yarder here. I don't really know what this green does. So I'm just gonna hit like a 62 yard shot. Hope it turns out fine. Did I go in? I think it hit the flag. This is wildly disappointing. Not only am I not in the hole, I'm not even on the green. So when I said I don't know what this shot does when it's like, when it lands, as it turns out, you can see kind of the green very much runs away from you. And uh, from 65 yards out, downwind, you really don't want the green to be running away from you. Yeah, I mean, Landed it pretty much exactly where you'd want to. And... It kind of came out weird. Ready? <laughs> I mean, I was hoping to fly it in, but it's all right. So that's a par. On to the eighth hole of this nine two over par really not where we want to be but if we finish birdie birdie and shoot even with how poorly i've hit the golf ball it'd be kind of cool so let's try and do that so we go out round round two right round two of this event and it's even worse conditions than i was expecting it was so unbelievably cold but in the back of my head i was kind of like good sick like I, i'm from kansas i've played in this sh a lot and these Dallas boys, these soft Dallas boys, if you're watching this right now and you're a Dallas boy, you're soft. I got an advantage here and just went out and strung shots together. That was kind of like the, the key to the, the whole success I had that day was just string shots together. Don't hit any great shots, hit a bunch of good shots, let great shots happen and don't make a lot of mistakes. And, and at the end of the day, I shot four under par. I'm six under total for the tournament. Um, and uh, ended up losing by a single golf shot, which was a great, great lesson. Because what that really taught me is, like, I don't have to play perfect golf to win a golf tournament. I, like I said, I started off round one with a three putt from 20 feet. I missed a six footer on the second hole. I made a bad bogey on the third hole. I, on the second round, I three putted from nine feet on the ninth hole, and I lost the tournament by one. And it's like, you know, I think, again, Ben a year ago would have been like, God, how did I choke that tournament away? How did I not win? What's wrong with me? How can I three putt from nine feet when I have a chance to win the golf tournament? But new Ben, happy Ben, positive Ben, 
subscribe to the channel if you want to see more of this guy is happy you know like I, I had a great opportunity to win a golf tournament despite making some mistakes and I think going forward like you know I'm two over through three right now I was two over through three when I had my best finish ever at a professional event like stuff can happen you can make something good happen even if you play bad golf and like learning that lesson through that experience was well oh, this chef's kiss like trust the process to a T you know and it really reinvigorated my my goal this year which is to win a golf team. it's really that simple like I, I am so confident that I can win a golf tournament this year it's not even fun we're gonna go seven iron little trap draw start it just right of the flag try to work it in so uh, this hole I'm not gonna say what course we're at because I was asked not to again but this hole hosts a pretty big tournament or used to host a pretty big tournament and they put grandstands around this green I want to say since then they've redone the screen because I don't remember the big backstop behind the hole that you can see. But uh, it is kind of weird to see this hole without the grandstands because I'd never really come out here when they're not hosting the tournament. A little bit more trap, a little bit. A lot of trap, maybe too much draw on that golf shot. But we got a birdie putt. It looks like we're pin high. So let's knock that thing in. Let's get to one over par and get halfway to that goal of shooting even. Come on, baby. Let's shoot even par. It's not often, I don't think, that you see a touring golf professional trying to hype himself up to shoot even. But that's just that's the nature of a 40 degree day. Sometimes it gets bad. Nice so freaking tucked up against that bunker. Got about a 28 footer here. It's pretty rough coming out of this first couple feet, but if it comes out right, I got a pretty good idea of the line. I think it's gonna break maybe two feet from left to right. Just gotta give it the right pace. Remember when I said it has to come out clean? It didn't come out clean. It came out real bumpy. And it is just directly downwind. I have no excuses to not hit a good drive here. Come on, baby, let's get one in the fairway. Eagles can happen. An eagle to shoot 36, I would take it. I think that's fairway. I have a block, but I think it I think it's fairway. If you if you're, you watching this right now, you can go down in the comments and there are gonna be comments of people that are like, this guy sucks, this guy is terrible because of the way I started. I started poorly. There are gonna be people who watch the first three holes and just go, whoa, this guy's a pro? No! I've started better than two over through three before. So go look for those guys in the comments. Got 136 here, straight downwind. So, just, just so cold, just so cold. So I'm gonna hit a 50 degree. Hopefully into the hole, like we talked about on the tee box. In the hole, please. Oh, that was close, but it's not in the hole. All right, four footer for birdie. Let's knock this thing in, finish strong. I didn't see it breaking like that at all, really. I'm shocked, to be honest. Some days you just don't have it. Well, guys, I know that wasn't my best golf, but I appreciate you tuning in, listening to the little update on how the tour is going. I don't know, I hit some okay shots today. I felt like considering how poorly I hit it, two over par is, is not the end of the world. I can always go out and shoot three under on the back nine and post one under, and that's kind of, it's kind of been the vibe lately. And uh, 
It's also, the, the, the wind is just so cold. I can't even really think. But what I can do is make sure to ask you to subscribe to the channel. Comment what you'd like to see next. Throw a like down, guys. Um, I know you're probably wishing that these videos had actual footage of the golf tournaments, right? If this video gets to 5,000 likes, I'm not kidding, Jalen just laughed. If this video gets to 5,000 likes, my next tournament, I will have a cameraman come out and actually film every shot. So if you wanna see that, drop a like, drop a comment. We'll, let's make this happen, because I wanna get a cameraman out to film the golf tournaments I'm playing in. Like that's kinda where I want this channel to go but the support's gotta be there for it because it's not cheap to make stuff like that happen. So drop a like, comment below if you wanna see that. So make sure to subscribe and hit the bell so when I do start doing it, you don't miss those videos coming out. Yeah, that's about it. Thank you for tuning in. I'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.